How last are these days? Is the rapture a real event we are to look forward to? Or a figment of fiction Hollywood produces for our entertainment? Is it merely the disappearance of people leaving their clothes behind? Or there is something more to it? Whatever the case, you are sure to learn something new and more about the rapture in today's video. If you want to know exactly what the rapture is, how close or far away we are from it, and exactly what will happen during this unprecedented supernatural event, then you might want to stick around. Because one wrong piece of information about this all-important event, and you could be left behind. Let's delve right in. A mentor of mine once taught me that the best way to understand any concept is to first define it. So how about we start by understanding exactly what the rapture is? Dr. Dennis J. Mock, master theologian and author of Bible Doctrine Survey, defines rapture as that event by which the church as Christ's bride will be caught up, to meet Christ in the air, to be with him forever. The study of the rapture is part of a bigger theological topic called eschatology, the study of last things. That being said as wildly as you can imagine it, the rapture is going to be the next biggest supernatural event after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the Pentecost. If the world thought that was strange, then it is not ready for the weight of what the rapture will present. Thus you can't help but ask yourself how ready the world is for such a grand event and its accompanying events. Who gets to go? To what extent can the world depend on and measure the clues given it before it happens? Let us not get ahead of ourselves. We will touch on these in a moment. Scripture's position on the subject of rapture takes on a manner and use of language that makes you pay attention. For instance, Jesus in Matthew 24, 44 tells us to be ready, and that the Son of Man will come at an hour we do not expect. As though that wasn't alarming enough, the Apostle Peter, in 2 Peter 3.10, raises the temperature a notch when he says, the day of the Lord will come like a thief. Among many other scriptural references, let's quote a final scripture in Revelations 1 to 7, which says that, He is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him. From these scriptural claims and position, there are two immediate lessons we can pick up. Firstly, the message is communicated clearly that no one knows the exact time Jesus will return. In fact, if you have been around for some time, you may already be privy to several failed attempts by certain religious groups and individuals to predict the exact day of the rapture. But that is a conversation for another day. Now that other day may be our very next upload, so this would be the best time to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell. Subscribe now to never miss out on our subsequent videos on the most exciting and controversial Christian topics. Moving on, the second lesson we pick up is that the rapture is going to be dramatic and visible. Now, this is a good place to chip in the words of Wayne Grudem, author of Systematic Theology. He has indicated that the scriptures on the rapture and the second coming are far too explicit to allow the idea, once popular in liberal Protestant circles, that the Spirit of Christ means an acceptance of his teaching and an imitation of his lifestyle of love would increasingly return to the earth. In lay terms, this means the rapture is not going to be a metaphorical occurrence, but a literal event where the husband will suddenly disappear while in bed with his wife, or an employee disappears before his boss while stretching his hand to take his promotion letter. And that brings us to the kind of emotions stirred in people when the subject of rapture comes to mind. The two core emotions that usually accompany the subject of the rapture is either reflective fear or expectant joy. Can you think of other ways people respond to this sensitive concept? Do share your thoughts with us in the comments section below. Now whether you'll be afraid or joyful about the topic will depend on which side of the line you are on. The author of Hebrews states in the ninth chapter and the eighth verse of the book that Christ will appear a second time to save those who are eagerly awaiting for him. 
It only goes to say then that only those who believe in Jesus will be eagerly waiting for him, and thus joyful about preceding events, such as the rapture. So if you were wondering who would be raptured, and who would not, well, there's your answer. Furthermore, speaking of sides, there are two major schools of thought when it comes to views on when the rapture will happen. There are those who believe that the rapture will occur after the seven-year Great Tribulation. This is what theologians call the post-tribulation view. On the other hand, you guessed it, pre-tribulation view. These group of people believes that the rapture will occur before the tribulation. Between these two most scholars incline toward the pre-tribulation view. This is because it is the view that most resonates with scripture and is consistent with God's purpose for the church. So if the rapture will happen before the tribulation, does scripture give the world any clues with which to expect the rapture? Thankfully it does, although it is not so simple. While the Bible gives clear events that will occur close to this imminent supernatural event, it can be pretty tough to establish the degree to which any of those prophecies have been fulfilled. For instance, earthquakes, famines, and wars have always been part of human history and will continue to be. Again, spanning from Emperor Nero to Adolf Hitler to various popes, there were those who were fully convinced that these men were the antichrists of their time. There is no doubt every generation will go through this cycle until one particular man of lawlessness finally provokes the rapture according to God's timelines. Finally, let's be honest, by what measure can we determine that the gospel has been preached to all nations? Apart from the surest event, the signs in the heavens, which includes the literal darkening of the sun and the falling of the stars, None of the prophecies can truly prepare us for the sudden and unexpected nature of the rapture. Perhaps the best position to take is that it is unlikely, but certainly possible, that Christ could return at any time. Walking in this understanding, coupled with humility in approach to the service to God and mankind, is the best preparation one can make towards this inevitable event. If you have enjoyed this video, please go ahead and check out other videos on this channel. You'll find them even more thrilling. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next upload.